Hey, what's going on weavers? Tim here again, and a few of you have noticed a pocket knife here or there in the backgrounds of my videos. And some of you have been curious about my collection. So here it is, the whole lot, my entire knife collection. I'm going to be going through these quickly because there are quite a few and I won't be reviewing these, just doing some show and tell. These are also a result of collecting, buying, trading and selling for the past six to seven years. So I didn't get to this point in a short amount of time and I do consider myself very fortunate to be able to enjoy a hobby like this. So that being said, let's get into it. First up, fixed blades. Here is the CRKT Fultz Minimalist. This is the Bowie style bladed version. Comes with this little sheath and I love the way this one just melts into your hand with a super ergonomic grip. Also has a little crown knot lanyard thing at the end too. This is the CRKT Sukoshi. This is a Lucas Burnley design and it's a take on the Quaken blade style and this guy is really small. Makes for a super compact fixed blade carry. I've got it on this J hook that it came with. You can easily hook that to your belt. Next is its bigger brother, the CRKT Obaki. This was the first one to come out before the Sakoshi and as you can see, it's a bit bigger. I've actually been using this one in the kitchen as a pairing and utility knife. So it's a bit worn and dirty as a result. That's it for fixed blades. Let's move on to slip joints, traditional knives, and non-locking folders. First up is this Camelus US military utility knife. Not sure where I got it. I think it was my dad's at one point. Could use some cleaning up, but cool little knife. This is a Muela Toledo slip joint knife. Has this nice bone handle and it was a souvenir. Uh, my parents got me many years back when they traveled to Spain. Here is my Victorinox Pioneer. Love this one and I find all the tools on it very useful. And I just like having at least one Swiss Army knife in my collection. Next up, a couple of GECs or Great Eastern Cutlery knives. This is the GEC Pattern 72 Cody Scout in OD Linen Micarta. I also have a little paracord lanyard on here with a brass bead. On that note, the other GEC I have is the 71 Bullnose Sodbuster, also in OD Linen Micarta. I like these knives as they remind me of a more traditional perspective of knife collecting and appreciation. Lastly, for the slip joints, I have this Benchmade Proper, which is a modern take on traditional knives, as this blade is made from CPM S30V steel as opposed to the carbon steels used in GECs, which I think are usually O1 tool steel. I really love this Benchmade and it's probably my most carried slip joint. And finally, I have this Rovivon Valor V10 Titanium Multi-Purpose Utility Tool that holds this utility blade. Cool little gadget, but doesn't get too much use for now. Now moving on to the more conventional folding knives. First up, the one that started it all, the Spydeco Tenacious. This one has seen a lot of action during my stint as a house painter. Did a lot of work with this guy. I even stonewashed the blade and pocket clip myself, as you can see. Next, I have this Wesson Almond Knife. It's a titanium handled flipper knife, and this was sent to me to check out from the good people over at Wesson. So perhaps you'll see this knife featured in another video in the near future. The next one is the Boker Escalibur. Don't really remember why I got this one as I don't ever really carry it, but it's an all right knife either way. Here is the CRKT Tuna, another Lucas Burnley design. This is a really nice inexpensive knife that has a really great design and I featured this one in a few videos as well. Up next is the Boker Lancer. This one was designed by Serge Penchenko. I really like this one too for its slim design and overall look. It's a great little EDC knife. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So I've got this one kitted out with carbon fiber scales, titanium backspacer and lanyard tube, all from Flytanium. Did a review on this one. Love the Para 2, and I'm sure many of you knife guys out there are familiar with this one too. Quite popular, the Paramilitary 2. Here is the Katsu Knives Folding Bamboo Damascus Knife. This was a gift from my loving girlfriend, and I wanted it because it looked really cool, almost like an homage to traditional Higonokami Japanese knives. 
This is the Spyderco Southern Flipper. Bought this one a second time after selling it before, but really nice design from acclaimed maker Brad Southerd. I've always loved Brad's designs, and he is one of my favorite knife makers alongside Michael Birch. Here is the Spyderco Techno. Love this sort of little big knife. This was another knife I had previously sold and then it was discontinued, so I always regretted it. And uh, my girlfriend, being the awesome one that she is, she tracked it down for me on a knife forum as a surprise one day. So I'm super happy to have this back in my collection. Anyhow, a great knife by Marcin Swish, a Polish custom knife maker. Next is the Spyderco Spidey Chef, again by Marcin Swish. This is a great EDC knife, but I've used it many times for food prep and it is a stellar kitchen knife. It's also just about rust proof, which is amazing, and the ergos are perfect for food prep. And the third in the Swish lineup is the Swish Spyderco Buoy. Really awesome knife that was sadly discontinued and quite sought after now. Yet another knife I sold before and regretted then bought back again. Luckily I got it way before it was discontinued so I didn't have to pay the insane markups they're going for right now. This one is pretty much near perfect in my books. This one is the Burnley Knives Keyhon. It's a mid-tech and it's got one of the best flipper actions I've ever experienced. The design is beautiful and functional and the fit and finish is also just about perfect too. Love Burnley Knives and the knives that Lucas makes. Here is the Birch Tree Bladeworks Mid-Tech V2. Now this was one of my first semi-custom knives and Michael Birch does really great work and truly unique and interesting designs. I did have the V1 and V3 at one point, but I did sell those as I wasn't really using them. Anyhow, I'm holding on to this one because I still really like it and I like to have at least one birch tree in my collection. Next is the Chris Reeve Large Sabenza 21 with micarta inserts. Probably one of the best high-end production knife companies out there and this is the closest I can probably get to one knife that could potentially replace my entire collection, for me at least. Love this knife and everything about it, it's pretty much perfect to me. And last but not least, my one and only fully custom knife. This is the Brad Southerd Dawes, one of his much earlier models, but to be able to own a full custom Brad Southerd truly makes this a gem in my collection. His current knife works of course are even better and much more refined, but this one is really great to me and it definitely falls in the permanent collection. So there we have it folks, that is my entire knife collection. It's evolved and changed a lot over time. Many knives have come and gone. At one point my collection was probably double this amount, but I've kind of distilled everything down over the years to just what I really like. And while I don't buy knives regularly anymore, I do still enjoy seeing what's out there and I do aim for quality over quantity at this point. I still feel I could thin out things a bit more, but I guess time will tell where my knife collecting goes. If you guys are interested on where to get some of these knives, I will try my best to look for the uh, proper links for where you can get these. Some of them you might not be able to find, but I'll do what I can. Look for the description box down below. So I hope you all found this interesting. And that being said, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you want access to exclusive tutorials as well as our Discord server, feel free to check out my Patreon page, link in the video cards as well as down below. You can join for as little as $3 a month. You can also support this channel by liking the video and commenting. Also, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out what I have to offer on the rest of my channel.